I think it's fairly accepted that rock and roll is a broad church when it comes to vocal expression from existential yowls of anguish, youthful rebellion to even political agitation. They come in all shapes and sizes. That's not to say there aren't some voices out there that are just unbearable. So I wish to subdivide this video into two sections with the voices that I acknowledge as being unconventional, odd, and can understand why some people perhaps just don't get along with them. And then at the very end I want to list some voices that I personally cannot stand. So in the first list of unconventional voices I would say that uh, many people have issues with. A list such as this can't get away from talking about Bob Dylan. Now Bob Dylan is a chameleonic figure really, especially vocally. Do check out my video on the changing voice of, uh, I'll put a card up there. So many people uh, have said to me that Dylan just can't sing and that they have to plug their ears to his constant braying. I disagree, I think his voice had a, a gruff Woody Guthrie uh, quality to it on those early folk records as Dylan the protest singer but I always liked that sort of um, affected nonchalance of his and contemptuous sneer uh, in, in the way he would phrase and uh, they perfectly suit the identity of the songs he's singing songs that perhaps wouldn't uh, have as much impact were they drenched in the the honeyed tones of I don't know, Simon and Garfunkel for example that being said I am a, a big Bob fan but even with uh, his bobness, I find there are times when I've listened to enough and I find myself tuning out. And once you start tuning out of what he's saying and how he's saying it, his voice starts to become irritating. It sounds like somebody vacuum cleaning in an adjacent room. Leonard Cohen is another one, you know, a great, great writer. Um, a poet, indeed poet, is what he's not just a singer-songwriter. But I can only take so much of that sort of monotone drone of his, you know, an album or two, before I have to switch it off and put something else on. Nevertheless, I think he's he's a wonderful, uh, iconic performer, absolutely deserving of a place on the shelves behind me. Ian Anderson is another one. You know, he had a remarkable voice in his prime, a huge Tull fan, as you know. And I love what he's uh, done with his voice over the years, how it's changed. For example, you take the, you go and watch the performance of Thick as a Brick. I think it was recorded around about 1976, live in is it Tampa, Florida? I could be wrong there. And then compare it to his vocal performance of the same song uh, a couple of years later at Madison Square Gardens. You can hear that kind of nasally, folky inflection start to creep in, which belies the kind of material that uh, Toll were exploring at the time. And obviously, is perfectly suited to their what I call their rustic period. But in the case of Ian Anderson, a slightly different case, I think, to people like Bob Dylan and Leonard Cohen. With Ian Anderson, it's a case of, you know, age and uh, deterioration and damage as well done to his uh, voice over the years. But if you listen to his voice now on the newer material, it's, it's material written to accommodate the voice that he has now, of course. But nevertheless, we get this kind of tuneful speaking is what we have with him. Um, the problem arises is when he tries to sing this classic Toll stuff live, it's been down-tuned so much as it it comes across as a colourless splodge, quite frankly, or uh, he's constantly reaching uh, for notes on the top shelf that are just no longer there. So he's kind of gasping for breath as he, he tries to sing these numbers. Justin Hawkins is another one. Um, a lot of people have told me they absolutely hate this guy's voice or what he does with his voice. Bon Jovi uh, himself has spoken out against Justin Hawkins. He said the darkness were a joke. They're kind of a parody band. I rather like that um, ballooning falsetto of his. It's just high camp glam rock and roll as far as I'm concerned. But the darkness are, uh, I think, a great rock and roll outfit. Uh, I rather enjoy his vocal histrionics. Uh, they're a fantastic band to see live if you ever get the chance. But there you are, I can understand how uh, a lot of people find Justin Hawkins objectionable. Mick Jagger is uh, another one really, and I, I'd almost put Van Morrison in the, the same kind of um, area. They're, they're kind of shouters really. Although I think Van Morrison uh, probably had a better voice, especially when he was in his prime. But Jagger um, was someone who was criticised for sounding too black, believe it or not, way back in the day. Uh, which he probably took as a compliment considering the, the, the Rolling Stones, the roots of where they come from. 
But uh, nevertheless, he a lot of people find not only his voice objectionable, but the man himself objectionable. My wife, for example, cannot stand watching him or listening to him. But I love that transatlantic drawl of his, especially on Exile on Main Street. I mean, his voice is just perfectly suited to this uh, murky and dark music. This his, his voice has this subterranean murmur to it. It's absolutely fabulous. I think Mick Jagger had a kind of a punky yowl even before such things were fashionable. Michael Stipe is a, another one who has a, an intriguing voice. He has a voice that I would say was um, very idiosyncratic. Um, some people didn't get on with that sort of incoherent mumble of his, but uh, I rather enjoyed it. I love those early REM records and that unassuming purr that uh, of his voice that very much defines them. And Tom Waits is another one people understandably uh, find listening to him quite problematic. I like his voice, but I can only do about one album at a time, to be honest with you. It's, uh, it's, it sounds like a voice that's uh, been subjected to way too many late night benders, quite frankly. And don't get me wrong, I mean, I, I do like a bit of grit to a voice, uh, but this sounds more like a death rattle. I think one critic described him as sounding like a, a malevolent cookie monster. Tom Waits, I think there's some albums out there that are absolutely remarkable. Uh, but with him, it's the, his, his writing and delivery, uh, I think, that is uh, worth uh, exploring. And now the bit you've all been waiting for. I've spoken about singers that uh, are odd and idiosyncratic that I rather like. Now let's think about singers that I personally cannot stand. Chris Martin is someone that I cannot stand listening to, this yawping nasal congestion of his. He generally sounds like somebody has a, a serious um, uh, sinus issues. He just fluctuates between a kind of a tuneless whine and somebody chewing on a bag of toffees. It's just not for me. And the next one on my list sees us delving into prog territory. That is Roger Chapman from Family. I've tried with Family because they're a great, great band. They really are. I mean, I've got one of their albums up there. I can't remember which one it was. But I just cannot get past that voice. It's just incredibly grating for me. It sounds like somebody... Uh, harpooning a seal with a pneumatic drill but for me one singer that I really do dislike is Axl Rose I think the simile like nails down a blackboard is quite appropriate here if not somewhat overused now obviously when uh, Appetite for Destruction came out I was one of those that had that album and I listened to it a lot uh, I've, I've got a copy but I don't play it very often anymore certainly not in its entirety now, I've come to the conclusion that uh, I don't mind Axl Rose so much when he sings in a, a, a lower register a song like uh, Civil War, uh, which I know is not on that album, but a song like uh, It's So Easy, for example. Songs that he sings uh, has a sort of growly quality to it. But my problem with Axl Rose is when he reaches beyond that and begins to sound like somebody buggering a cat. So there you are, there's a list of voices that I think are extraordinary, um, which I can understand not being everyone's cup of tea, but nevertheless I like them. And then there's a few voices that I just cannot stand. Anyway, I'll leave you with my closing salvo, which is, as you know, hope you're well, staying safe, but more importantly, that you keep listening.